This is Michigan, the thumb of Michigan. In the spring and summer, these fields are richly filled with the sounds of farm equipment churning the earth to bring forth the fruit of the land. But in the winter, all is peaceful. Well, it was. What is Muxlow doing out there? I don't know, but it looks cold and I am nice and warm in here. This is the 2011 Audi Q5. We have the V6 version today, Quattro all-wheel drive, of course, as Audi's trademark uh, all-wheel drive program continues to get better and better. In this version, we have the V6 with 270 horsepower, so they're pretty much right on the mark there. This is not a huge vehicle by any means. It's um, uh, actually just about right size for most people's purposes. Uh, it's got a great look to it, I think, modern. It has uh, LED uh, running lights in the headlights and LED tail lights, so that adds a bit of uh, uh, upscale modern design. We're um, particular fans of the um, chrome detailing around the window treatment. Uh, the usual Audi design language is all here and accounted for. Um, particularly uh, good looking up front. Uh, this has the now familiar Audi grille, but uh, they finished it with a nice kind of glossy black as opposed to some of the flat black, cheaper looking plastic we've seen before. So we like that, and it has a nice wide planted stance to it. So it, uh, it looks uh, upscale, but capable at the same time. Now this V6 version with the 3.2 liter uh, all aluminum direct injection engine is a sweetheart. It's very smooth, makes great noises, and it'll rev all the way to a 7,000 RPM red line easily. Um, and uh, we're just a little disappointed in the torque, especially considering the now available 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder, an engine that you know we love is available in the Q5 and it's the higher output version so you're getting uh, 258 pound-feet of torque in that version and it peaks at 1500 rpm almost diesel like in its uh, torque characteristics now this V6 you think would uh, have to outdo that but it's actually producing less torque and you have to rev higher to get to it so um, really the four-cylinder feels uh, would feel probably just as gutsy and even more so. And then of course there's a huge price difference uh, and a significant savings if you stick with the four-cylinder. So we'll like to, uh, we'd like to review that and, and bring you our thoughts on that. But today we're talking about this V6 and it's really pretty good. We won't complain. Um, smooth, quiet, um, it returns uh, 18 miles per gallon in the city, 23 miles per gallon on the highway. Again, the four-cylinder is going to do significantly better there but we'll see how it measures up in the real world when we can actually test one. But Another area that Audi has always done well at, of course, is an interior design standpoint, and that's no exception here. Um, even though our tester is basically all black, um, there is some bright work to break things up, and they're going to this new uh, kind of rough finished wood trim inlay that we first seen in the A7 and the new A8, and it's trickling down here now. We really like it. It's a kind of a new take on wood, which was getting a little tired. I mean, everybody does the glossy wood, and it all basically looks the same. But Audi is trying this, and um, it looks pretty good. We like it. It's uh, it's fresh. So uh, the rest of the cabin, you know, gives you fairly comfortable seats. Actually, they're a little flat on the bottom, but for the intended audience, uh, they probably do the trick just fine. They're pretty comfortable. The steering wheel is another design element we think needs to be updated. We've been looking at this basic steering wheel in Audi's lineup for years now. Um, actually, I think since the last generation A6 debuted, so it's been a while. But, um, you know, the gauges continue to be ultra legible. Um, the center stack, of course, is dominated by the MMI navigation system. And, um, it, continues to be a workable solution. Uh, you still have to go hunting for a few things, but after you've used it for a while, as we have now in lots of different Audi models, um, you know, things become pretty logical. So we're okay with that. MMI is being updated in the higher end models, and we expect most of those advancements to trickle down through the lineup uh, sooner rather than later anyway. So we'll look forward to those. Now this model has a uh, 
upgraded Bang & Olufsen audio system. We know Audi has entered into a partnership and uh, with them to be their exclusive uh, upscale audio supplier and uh, it's $850 but I'm telling you when you crank it up it is money well spent. It sounds terrific. Tight highs, good bass, it just really really um, reproduces audio very nicely and $850 in the world of premium audio systems is actually not a bad value so um, we recommend that's an option we'd keep. Now we were a bit surprised to find that Audi includes this giant panoramic glass roof as standard equipment on the V6 model. Um, usually that's an option that they will uh, charge an arm and leg for but it's standard here. Now you know conversely they still charge an extra 400 and some odd dollars for silver paint so figure that out if you will but um, the V6 comes very well equipped. We've got standard 19 inch wheels in this case uh, Audi has seen fit to wrap them in Pirelli Scorpion winter tires um, so we can actually get around this area so thank you Audi but uh, 19 inch wheels standard the tri-zone climate control in here is standard, it works very well. Power, heated, front seats, standard. Um, the only thing we really had to pay extra for, like we said, is the paint and the Bang & Olufsen stereo, and they charge a very, very dear $3,000 to get the MMI system, which bundles in uh, satellite radio, HD radio, and um, a few other things like that, but uh, I don't know. We could live without it, certainly, and $3,000 is a lot of money, so I don't know. We'll, uh, we wish that price would come down a little bit, but it, it is a good navigation system. The graphics are modern, and it, it looks good. Now, you remember I mentioned this has a very stout, very capable Bang & Olufsen stereo system. It sounds really, really good. We're also going to perform on no. the big show on CBS. <laughs> well, the DJ is, you know, never sounded better. <laughs> uh, you'll have to take our word for it. When you've got a pounding uh, CD in there, it sounds every penny worth $850. At the end of a full day of playing in the snow in the frozen tundra of Michigan, the Audi Q5 won us over. We like the luxurious interior appointments, we like the quattro all-wheel drive, go anywhere, blast through any snow handling and all-weather capability. The steering, the brakes, the handling are all set up towards the sporty end of the spectrum, which we enjoy. The interior comfortably seats four and five in a pinch, there's room in the back, the base price is a pretty reasonable $42.5. We had a number of options, brought ours up to about $47.7. That gets to be a little bit high, but you're going to pay about that for an, uh, like a Lexus RX 350, which doesn't have uh, as much capability in our eyes and blends in a lot better. This is a handsome vehicle, we think, with beautiful modern details like LED lighting. Um, and uh, the whole thing just really won us over. It's a strong package. We really are looking forward to testing the four-cylinder. It offers nearly as much power, far better fuel economy, and knocks about seven grand off the sticker price. If everything else is the same, that could be the model to get. In the meantime, if you are looking for a V6 and you want to blast through the snow and you want to have strong handling when the snow melts away, hopefully that's soon. Um, the V6 Q5 is a strong, strong all-weather contender. You know what? It's pretty cold out here. I better go find Muxlow. He's probably frozen in a snowbank somewhere. I feel bad I left him. That wasn't very nice. <laughs>